Under more pleasant circumstances, well, the need may not seem as great. But the need is tremendous, for there is no security, there is no place to hide, there is no retreat in the world, that is secure from the alien presence that is here. That is why there are only two choices you can acquiesce, or you can stand for your freedom. This is the great decision placed before each person. This is the great turning point. You cannot be foolish in the greater community. It is too demanding an environment. It requires excellence, commitment. Your world is too valuable. The resources here are coveted by others. The strategic position of your world is held in high regard. Even if you are living in some remote world far from any trade route, far from all commercial engagements, eventually you would be discovered by someone. That eventuality has come for you now, and it is well underway. Take heart, then. This is a time for courage, not for ambivalence. The gravity of the situation facing you only confirms the importance of your life, and your response and the importance of the preparation that is being given in the world today. It is not only for your edification and advancement, it is for your protection and your survival as well. Sixth Briefing Questions and Answers We feel that it is important, given the information, that we have provided thus far, to respond to questions that must surely arise regarding our reality, and the significance of the messages that we have come to give. Given the lack of hard evidence, why should people believe what you are telling them about the intervention? First, there must be great evidence concerning the visitation to your world. We have been told that this is the case. Yet we have also been told by the unseen ones, that people do not know how to understand the evidence, and that they give it their own meaning a meaning, that they prefer to give it, a meaning that provides comfort and reassurance for the most part. We are certain, that there is adequate evidence to verify, that the intervention is occurring in the world today, if one takes the time to look, and to investigate this matter. The fact that your governments or religious leaders do not reveal such things does not mean that such a great event is not occurring in your midst. How can people know? That you are real. Regarding our reality, we cannot demonstrate our physical presence to you, and so you must discern the meaning, and the import of our words. At this point, it is not merely a matter of belief. It requires a greater recognition, a knowledge, a resonance. The words we speak we believe are true, but that does not assure that they can be received as such. We cannot control the response to our message. There are people who require more evidence than can possibly be given. For others, such evidence will not be necessary, for they will feel an inner confirmation. In the meantime, perhaps we remain a controversy, and yet we hope, and we trust, that our words can be considered seriously, and that the evidence that does exist, which is substantial, can be gathered and understood by those who are willing to give this their effort and their focus in life. Greater than from our perspective, there is no greater problem, challenge and opportunity to receive your attention. Therefore, you are at the beginning of a new understanding. This does require faith and self-reliance. Many will reject our words simply because they do not believe that we could possibly exist. Others perhaps will think that we are part of some manipulation that is being cast upon the world. We cannot control these responses. We can only reveal our message and our presence in your life, however removed that presence may be. It is not our presence here that is of paramount importance, but the message that we have come to reveal, and the greater perspective and understanding, that we can provide for you. Your education must begin somewhere. All education begins with the desire to know. We hope that through our discourses we can gain at least part of your confidence, in order to begin to reveal what we are here to offer. What do you have to say to those who view the intervention as a positive thing? We understand, first of all, the expectation that all forces from the heavens, are related to your spiritual understanding, traditions and fundamental beliefs. The idea that there is prosaic life in the universe is a challenge to these fundamental assumptions. From our perspective, and given the experience of our own cultures, we understand these expectations. In the distant past, we maintained them ourselves. And yet we had to relinquish them, in facing the realities of greater community life and the meaning of visitation. You live in a great physical universe. It is full of life. This life represents countless manifestations, and also represents the evolution of intelligence and spiritual awareness at every level. 
What this means is that, what you will encounter in the greater community encompasses almost every possibility. However, you are isolated, and do not yet travel in space. And even if you had the capability to reach another world, the universe is vast, and no one has gained the ability to go from one end of the galaxy to the other with any kind of speed. Therefore, the physical universe remains enormous and incomprehensible. No one has mastered its laws. No one has conquered its territories. No one can claim complete dominance or control. Life has a great humbling effect in this way. Even far beyond your borders this is true. You should then come to expect that you will meet intelligences representing forces for good, forces for ignorance and those who are more neutral regarding you. However, in the realities of greater community travel and exploration, emerging races such as your own will, almost without exception, encounter resource explorers, collectives and those seeking advantage for themselves as their first contact with greater community life. Regarding the positive interpretation of the cetacean, part of this is human expectation, and the natural desire to welcome a good outcome, and to seek help from the greater community for the problems that humanity has not been able to resolve on its own. It is normal to expect such things, particularly when you're considering that your visitors have greater capabilities than you. However, a large part of the problem in interpreting the great visitation has to do with the will and the agenda of the visitors themselves. For they are encouraging people everywhere to view their presence here as wholly beneficial to humanity and to its needs. If this intervention is so well underway, why didn't you come sooner? At an earlier time, many years ago, several groups of your allies came to your world to visit in an attempt to give a message of hope to prepare humanity. But alas their messages could not be understood and were misused by those few who could receive them. In the wake of their coming, the visitors from the collectives have amassed and gathered here. It has been known to us that this would happen if your world is far too valuable to be overlooked, and, as we have said, it does not exist in a remote and distant part of the universe. Your world has been observed for a long time by those who would seek to use it for their own benefit. Why can't our allies stop the intervention? We are only here to observe and to advise. The great decisions facing humanity are in your hands. No one else can make these decisions for you. Even your great friends far beyond your world would not intervene. For if they did so, it would cause warfare, and your world would become a battleground between opposing forces. And should your friends be victorious, you would become wholly reliant upon them. Unable to fend for yourself, or to maintain your own security in the universe. We know of no benevolent race that would seek to bear this burden. And in truth, it would not serve you either. For you would become a client state to another power, and would have to be governed from afar. This is not beneficial for you in any way, and it is for this reason, that this is not occurring. Yet the visitors will cast themselves as saviors and rescuers of humanity. They will utilize your naivety. They will capitalize on your expectations, and they will seek to wholly benefit from your trust. Therefore, it is our sincere desire, that our words can serve as an antidote to their presence, and to their manipulation and abuse. For your rights are being violated. Your territory is being infiltrated. Your governments are being persuaded. And your religious ideologies and impulses are being redirected. There must be a voice of truth regarding this. And we can only trust that you can receive this voice of truth. We can only hope that the persuasion has not gone too far.